Hey guys, yeah, welcome to episode three of season two <laughs> of the Founders Connect. Here, I have conversations or interviews, whatever you want to call it, with entrepreneurs who are leading amazing tech startups in Africa. Now, in this episode, we're going to speak to Ben, the co-founder, CEO of Hi. Flux. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing, Ben? I'm good. Are you Thanks. excited to be here? Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming around. So let's get right to the video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am PC Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. So, Ben. You know what people ask when they start dating? Mm -hmm. Tell me about you. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, my name is Ben Elwan. Elwan? Uh, yeah, Elwan. Um, so uh, I'm a co-founder of um, Flux. Mm -hmm. um, previously, it used to be a software engineer. You used um, to be a software engineer? Yeah, now okay. we're like, facing business and all. Ah, uh, right. oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a dropout. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I dropped out of OAU, um, mechanical engineering. What level did you do to her? 400 level. But, so you're just one year to find out and you dropped out? Yeah. Why? Flux. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, right now just I'm busy um, building the business. So. Okay, so tell okay. me between, tell me about the dropout story and then just how Flux started. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, that, that's like a good um, I can call back. So how Flux started, I'll just start with the whole background story, then yes, it would lead to dropping out and Flux, right? Um, so I, I met my co-founders um, in our freshman year, 100 level uh, at OAU, um, around 2016. And um, you know, we were, we were all just um, computer enthusiasts, right? Um, we all do, like programming, um, basically, what we wanted to do that time is when we when we got into school, we heard a lot about um, startups that came out of our school. Mm. We had we, we um, had a few encounters with um, engineers from our school that were working at Google, Apple. So it was like a really high motivation point for us, and um, we just started um, doing stuff. We didn't know we were eventually going to have a startup. Like all we just wanted to do was okay, come together, and we just like program all night just to. Um, skip classes <laughs> <laughs> it's like classic um, facebook story <laughs> yeah um, basically right we like skip a lot a lot of classes right and um we just just like meet all how many were you guys um so when we started um it was like a programming club so mm. we were about 20. Oh, okay right um although a lot of people left to focus on their books <laughs> right um so around that number we just used to like meet to um talk about programming talk about stuff builds and all that and so it was around 2000 towards the end of 2017 um we wanted to um we we decided to like build a fun project and what it was was it was like this um, website that allowed people in our school to find merchants around them, mm. um, right, more, more or less like hyperlocal e-commerce, right. right? And um, we built that, and it it blew up in mm. our campus, twenty thousand users, you know, and all that stuff. But, but then, like, we didn't really understand the dynamics of how startups work, right? right? In fact, we did not know how to do anything. Right? We, <laughs> Just the only, exactly, <laughs> that was all we like. We knew how to do, like, to write programs and. and so eventually we ran into issues um so one of the issues that made us to stop that business was okay so we built this platform and getting the products to people was a problem right yeah. we didn't understand how to bring in logistics so right. basically our plan was that okay if i'm not having class and there's an order i'll just take you take it yourself <laughs> and go and we were just like shuffling around um, something like that right and um, instead of us to go for classes we we're going manually to talk to merchants mm -hmm. you know and all that so but when when um, that business closed down why did it close um, because, was of because yeah it was because of all this but did you guys make money from it um no no we, we did not make money mm -hmm. um all right it was at that point where we were supposed to make money so we we figured out that something was wrong mm -hmm. right so yeah we built this product people liked it um but we, we were not making money mm -hmm. from it right and we started to think of how to make money and we saw that okay we, if we we're forced to make money we need logistics we need mm -hmm. It was so much. It was so much. So, right? so at some point, I just told my teammates, "Okay, um, guys, um, I don't think we should do this anymore. Um, 
I think we should look at other other things and. Um, it was first a little bit controversial because we were like, oh yeah, we can, we can do it, we can, we can, we can start small. I'm like, no, 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 we're not starting small <laughs> than this. And, you know, we just um, all decided to pack up and, you know, do a lot of other stuff. Um, so around, around that same time, say like three months after that time, um, we wanted to like um, receive payment in pounds right, mm. for, for a little stuff that we did. And... Um, this was the this was where flux started right, right. Um, so it was very difficult for us to like do this um, we um, had to like go to look for a lot of options you know the typical way of when you want to receive money start looking for platforms that let you receive money from usa you know, mm. this kind of stuff and um, we ended up using Skrill. but um, by the time that we by the time we got to Skrill, they blocked off our accounts kyc was over seven days um, when the money got to our bank account the bank was pounds i think then the exchange rate for pounds was around 470 or 480 right and the banks they gave it to us at maybe 370. you guys lost a shitload of money exactly so uh, and then our, uh, because of that experience it was a very bad experience for us right um i just i was like i told my co-founders like okay so i mean this is 2019 why should this hmm. um, be happening why is there no platform to help us do this i mean there are a lot of platforms that help you but um, either they have high charges, either, um, they have delayed transactions, mm -hmm. and just a lot of complex stuff you're trying to transact, you know, they block off your account. But mostly what they do is they let you set up, they're all friendly, and the moment you send small money inside, the account is blocked out. Yeah. Right? Um, so we decided, it was around that time, we decided to like look at the ways to solve cross-border payments. Mm. And one way that came to our heads was to use crypto to do this. Right. Um, you guys were already familiar with cryptocurrency? Yes, exactly. We were already um, familiar with crypto, right? We knew how Bitcoin worked. We knew how all these cryptocurrencies worked, USDT. Um, although we were not in-depth about blockchain technology, but we right. just had the base understanding of um, how these things worked, right? Um, so we thought of it, oh yeah, if you send money using Bitcoin, sometimes the transactions happen in less than five minutes, mm. right? So this can be a way that we can use to like power transactions. And another another good thing with that was that these um, cryptos are universally accepted, mm. right? Almost everywhere, everywhere people are able to just transact in crypto and you know send it to you mm -hmm. um, if you have a wallet to receive it. So that was like what led up to us um, thinking of ways to like um, build Flux. Amazing. So when you guys said, you know, what, we're going to build this platform that can solve our problem, mm -hmm. what, what were like the the next steps? Was it to learn about blockchain technology? Was mm -hmm. it into get into Pioneer because I know you guys got into Pioneer. Yeah. Like how did mm -hmm. how did you guys just take like from idea to mm -hmm. step one? Yeah. Okay, so um after that first initial thought we um actually started learning about blockchain. Right. Um, we took a Udacity course on blockchain just to like get How many were you guys now? Um, as at this point, we're just six. Six. Yeah. So we are the six people that will go ahead to like start working on Flux and all. Mm. Um, so um, we had to start. We had to like learn to um, have in-depth knowledge of how the technology works. Mm. Right. Um, so this was like just beyond taking Python to build something. Yeah. You know. Um, so we did that, and you know, we did that in like three weeks or less, and. Um, uh, the next step for us was very difficult because we had no idea how to go about this, mm. right? We knew that, okay, so for instance, if you want to build a platform that accepts Bitcoin, you need something to take the Bitcoin. And um, we started looking at ways to um, integrate crypto into our application, but of course, we did not know our way around it. We just we just merry-go-round. <laughs> and we, so when we tried to look, we reached out to other platforms for APIs. Probably we did not just reach out the correct way, but right. most of them did not just return our emails. We tweeted at some people. We did a lot of things, right? It was not just working. So and at that point, I was like, okay, guys, so let's do this. At that point, we started approaching all of, of our problems from um, first principles, right? So if you want to build something complex, you start from the smallest part. Right. And we were like, okay, so how do we go about this? Like, um, we want to build an app that will let you send money into Nigeria and also spend from the wallet. So I'm like, okay, what do we need to build the spend from the wallet part? Right. And um, we knew that, okay, we just needed to build our core wallet infrastructure, integrate with Flutterwave, mm. and boom, we have we our have app, <laughs> right? And that was what we did. So we built that first part. Um, well, when we built that first part, I'm telling, started telling people, oh yeah, um, come use Flux. I'm like, what's the difference between Flux and my bank? I'm like, oh my God. It was, it was that difficult. And people were like, oh yeah, Flux is nice, but 
why should I leave Flux? Why yeah. should I leave my yeah. bank to I just Flux? Flux? Right? Okay, so at, point, at some point we thought that okay, the entry point is going to be us integrating cheap data and airtime with Flux. Mm. So we did that. People were not using the data. Mm. People were using um, airtime, and it was very. That was when we started um, getting realistic views of how people interact with your product, right? Mm. So at that point, when you are starting, you just have this imaginary thought that oh yeah, if I build hundred thousand users, you and, just you know, call exactly. And you know the funny thing is, these users that are, they'll be like, when you are building, they'll be hailing you. Oh, yeah, 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 good job, good job. And when you launch, like, oh, yeah, try our app. And be like, um, where should I? <laughs> exactly. So we just had. We, one thing we learned how to do was to iterate very fast, mm. right? So we could pull down the whole infrastructure and rebuild it in two weeks if mm. we needed to, right? That was, and you guys were all engineers. Exactly, mm. right? So we just gave it our all. And one thing that happened was Corona happened. Mm. It took us away from school, right? For that period of time where there was no school, we just had this deep focus on mm. building, right? No classes, um, nothing. And we saw how much progress we we're made making. out of school. And that was like the major decision for us. That, okay, so when there was no corona, and when there was corona rather, we had a lot of time to focus on this product. It was basically morning and night. We spent mm. hundreds of hours working. Um, so we just decided that, oh, it would not make sense to go back to school. So all right? six of you dropped off? Uh, how many dropouts? Okay, I'm gonna count <laughs> them. Myself was here, Israel, I made it. Oh, we have four dropouts. Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all the six of you are still in the company, but four dropped out and two of them are still in school. Uh, one is a graduate. One has graduated. The other one, one is, is remote from school. <laughs> <laughs> she was. Yeah. So, um, but, but the core, right? The four of us are the core, right? Um, so. Okay, so you guys are the co founders. Yes, exactly. But the other ones are founding members. Exactly, exactly. So, exactly. you guys are the four that have equity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so um, so we just had to like um, come together. I'm like, oh yeah, I told my co-founder, I'm like, um, bro, I, I think I'm dropping out. So like, guy, me too. And you're like, <laughs> me too. And, and yeah, was, no, was let's just, do it together. It was just mutual amongst all of us. So it was very easy. So there was no, okay, I'm dropping out. Why are you not dropping out? The moment I brought it up, everyone was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm also dropping out. Like, let's drop out. It's cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's <laughs> drop out. Uh, but we had this, we had this, um, this one second of fear, like. Okay, so we are, we are dropping out. Yeah, are we really dropping out? Like, yeah, we are really dropping out. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so, so let, let me get it correctly, right? The reason you guys dropped out was because during the pandemic, when there was lockdown mm -hmm. and school was closed, yeah. you guys were able to give it your all. Yeah. So was it the all in terms of building mm -hmm. or all that there was now traction mm -hmm. in the product? Well, so as of that time, we had not launched. So oh, okay. it was basically zero traction. Um, so it was our all in terms of building. So, you know, one thing about school is you always have assignments, you always yeah. all that stuff, right? It's not like when there was school where serious students anyways. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, we usually um, put flux even above school, even that period. Yeah. But of course, you cannot miss your test. You have to yeah, submit exactly. assignments. You, you know, when there is exam, like you just have to go read and all that, right? So all those factors were a bit distracting mm. right so during the pandemic it was us spending 22 out of 24 hours mm. building we enjoyed doing this we we're passionate about it so oh it was goodness. very easy for us like giving all the work right so yeah it was basically about um, the building it helped us to build the product to a point where people could start using it yeah so at what yeah. point did you guys now know that yes flux actually that thing and it's making sense what was that milestone that happened in like Okay. Well, thank yeah. God, we didn't your um, <laughs> Well, I would say that it was when we, um, when we got our first investment check, yeah, and we're like, oh. like so, <laughs> yeah. So, so like before that time, we we used to like we're trying to like reach, reach, we're reaching out to people like, oh yeah, we're building this stuff. Of course, you need money, right? Yeah. Not just technical expertise. Um, we reached out to a lot of people that okay, we are building this product. So can you look at it? You know, then. I mean, 5K check would have made a lot of difference for us yeah. that time, right? B but it was not coming. So at that point when the first person to bet on us did... Who was the first person, if you can um, share? It was um, Hustle Fund. Okay. Yeah, Elizabeth Ian, mm. right? So when Hustle Fund gave us our first check, at that point we all sat down and were like, okay, bros. Okay, so someone just gave us money for this thing. <laughs> How much? Like, so it was 25k. Ah, right? uh, so, and when you come out, that means a narrow. Exactly, it was, it was a lot. I'm like, oh, and 
it was so exciting because we knew that this was going to enable us to go to the next milestone mm. right and at that point and the funny thing is they gave us they signed us our first check even before traction mm. right so we, we so proceed mm -hmm, yeah so we got into pioneer but one thing about pioneer is that they just help you um do a lot of stuff in terms of growth mm. um incorporate you as a delaware company mm. to give you um networking communities and all that stuff right and they invest later right right so after pioneer um puzzle fund came in so mm. it was very it, i would say it was very strategic for us right. mm -hmm. so um we we just had to like really focus the funds on you know pushing to the next level mm. in terms of product in terms of traction growth that was all we were concerned about because we were like okay so 25k is not infinite money mm -hmm. right and if we misuse this it means that we'll be back to That's you know one. the drinking gary phase <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so we just had to like really utilize it um, yeah and so how, how did you guys get into when did you guys get into YC? was it immediately after pioneer when hustle fund invested it was like so, um, YC you know, happened immediately the funny or? thing is after um hustle fund invested mm -hmm. um we had about four other people that dropped almost the same size of check mm. right um so like hustle fund invested about three weeks later another person dropped 25k it was just like that right, right? so when we got into yc it was late last uh, okay so basically what happened was just a quick question so hustle fund came as a result of being in pioneer and the network that you guys were exposed to um, hustle fund basically um to be honest i, I really do not even understand why they came <laughs> <laughs> honestly like <laughs> i really don't understand because of course okay pioneer was good right um they knew that okay we've been going through this growth phase um which pioneer, pioneer really helped us with that but at that point i remember talking to um elizabeth Yen and and the project like oh, how many users do you have i'm like oh yeah so we have 100 people and you know, they are not all active you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know and oh but i guess it was um when we spoke like uh, me being able to answer a lot of those questions about the product and where right. we want to be and what we're currently doing so that was just like it for her right mm -hmm. and a few days after that she gave me an answer and you know signed the check and we moved on and started doing intros and so it was like very um, really really helpful to us right so um so yeah yeah so you're mm -hmm. about to tell me about yc okay then for y combinator um so early last year we did a flux yc application mm -hmm. but then we didn't even have a product of course it would be <laughs> it was just and you know the just funny vibes. thing exactly the funny thing is that we were upset when we got rejected <laughs> right and now when i go back to that application i tell my co-founders i say i wouldn't even have accepted us <laughs> at that point if i was a yc partner right so at the point where we applied to y combinator it was towards the end of um last year mm. they had already done interviews they had already in fact we got into yc eight hours to the start of the program <laughs> yeah so but we just pushed an application right and um we got an interview and we got accepted some hours after the interview so it was like really amazing wow. right very very amazing so well, what pushed you guys because after getting that first rejection what pushed you to say i won't say apply this same year? okay so so what happened because it was the same year right beginning yeah. of the year and mm -hmm. end of the year yeah so what happened was we knew that we had um gotten some traction mm -hmm. right and um we knew that we had gotten some traction right and during um around september last year what happened was we spoke to a yc partner uh, that knew where we were at that point at the point of almost zero progress All right so um coincidentally we were trying to raise funds and we got in touch with another yc partner mm. and when the yc partner did interview for us um, she was like um yeah i think that she, she thinks that this is going to be a good fit for y combinator mm. And that um, she thinks she encourages us to apply um, since we've made a lot of progress since um, when we launched and all. And she was very encouraging to her us. She helped us even review our YC application, right. you know. And um, then we applied after submitting our application. Other partners reached out to us. Then we did the interview, and um, we got accepted. So it was those. Um, so that first push mm. of oh yeah, I think you should apply to YC. Mm. And I also emailed Michael Saibu mm. before that time, and it was like. 
um, I think you should apply to YSL. That was just his reply, yeah. you know. Um, so all those. So you were, knew that there's something. Exactly. Yeah, signals it was, here and mm -hmm. there. It was like an encouragement, right? So we just had to do the application and you know, went through the process. It was it was great. Amazing. So mm -hmm. now you've gone from being a software engineer to mm -hmm. being a CEO. Yeah. What are the, what are the change? What what changes have happened? What's the what's the difference in dynamics? Well, um, so so one thing that I'm currently not doing right now is I'm not currently um in writing the software mm. of the product right but I, I i love being technical right being a ceo is awesome and very boring sometimes <laughs> right you have to like sit down a lot of hours a lot of meetings scheduling emails emailing back and all that stuff right it's boring right but what, what i enjoy doing is i enjoy doing technical stuff right so basically now what we do is anytime we have a product and we need to like build stuff we all come together um and break down the product architecture, how it's supposed to be, mm. right? How things are supposed to work, mm. right? So I'm very actively very involved active. in that, right? So it's very interesting to see, you just break down things and you bring them all together and now they're making something like it's really big. So I still do that in terms of technical, um, the technical aspect, right? But the active programming, I have my co-founders that are doing that. My co-founders are really awesome. Um, so. Um, they are actively doing programming and we have um, other engineers that we've hired. Together, so you guys have hired. So how many are you guys in the team now? Well, so currently, um, the full-time employee force, we are about 12. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you mind blown that, oh my God, I've gotten to this stage? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, um, it's very amazing, really, because, um, you know, I was telling someone yesterday that um, the initial point where we we're not able to pay salaries where you just have to sweet talk somebody into believing your vision <laughs> and you know getting to work with you right now it's just all based on oh yeah what on what pay do you want what can you do okay mm. come in and uh, all that uh, so so it's like <laughs> so so that change is very good right it's like a sign of growth right so um yeah so usually i'll just start sweet talking people <laughs> telling them how big this can get you know and trying to get them to believe in what you're doing and a lot of people will pass some will believe and join you and, and also yeah the change is definitely a good one amazing so you've gone from drop out to ceo yc alum yeah, yeah. pioneer alum mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what 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 do you think is next for flux what are you guys looking to build what does the roadmap look like well, so what next um so for flux um we are really working on um, very hard to um, achieve the initial goal mm. for the product which which is um, being able to facilitate cross-border payments from anywhere in the world mm. into Africa and from Africa back into anywhere in the world right um, we believe that the payment system globally is broken not just Africa it's broken globally um, and I think that since PayPal since PayPal I don't think there has been any huge financial um, anything that has been built in terms of payment mm. right basically everything that has come after paypal has been almost like paypal mm. right they've been good right but they are still like paypal right no real difference mm -hmm. right so for us what we want to do at flux is to um enable that point where um paying for something is as easy as maybe doing a bank transfer right where you just send money and instantly people get their cash anywhere and are able to spend it anywhere in the world right so yeah that's the um, goal so another thing i like to say is i like to say we we are trying to build the google for payments in uh -huh. the sense that you know the, the description is you know when you want to search for something online the first thing that you go the first place you go to is google, google. right we want that for flux right where when you want to make payments the first the first thing that comes to mind is oh yeah flux instead of going to search for different payment apps that can work and just What's flux so, it. Yeah, flux it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. So I think you shared a lot about your story and mm -hmm. just about flux. And we're really rooting for you guys. Yeah, when I first you. saw, I think when I really heard about you was mm -hmm. when the TechCrunch article came out. And I was like, yeah. okay, <laughs> this is like, this is really amazing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I definitely need to speak to you. So thank yeah. you for coming around. Yeah, thank you Do you have any me. last words to maybe where you stood there to where should drop out? <laughs> Just um, final words, though. So, so yeah. Um, my my word is for every single young person out there, yeah. right? Um, um, especially here in Africa. And um, one 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 trend that has been for a long time is before when you businesses in Africa they are being built that by people that have ten years work experience, you know, people that have money to some large extent, and really from people that have. But, um, that are backgroundless initially, but if you look at the um, startup 
system in other parts of the world, young people build stuff and you know they go big. So for instance, Stripe is one of them, right? Um, so my advice is for every one young person out there is to just you know, really believe in themselves. What brought us here is perseverance, a mm. lot of it, and um, a lot of focus too, right? Just being able to let go of every other thing we're doing and just Baby really focus, focus on this one thing and make sure that it works, right? Um, so yeah, that's my advice. Just believe in yourself, persevere a lot, right? And um, yeah, enjoy. Last question, how would I? If you're willing to share. Okay, um, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 23. Oh my... Yeah, yeah, I have a co-founder that just turned 20. <laughs> I need to go and think about what I'm doing with my life. I need to go and think about what I'm doing with my life. Are you the oldest on your team? Um, in the core team? Yeah. Yeah, but generally, no. So, of the four of you, you're the oldest? Mm -hmm. Of the four of us, I'm, I'm the oldest. Okay, guys, I need to go and think about my life. <laughs> so, so, we need to end this video right now. Thank you yeah. so much for coming around. Yeah, thank you for I can't wait me. to see the amazing things you guys are going to yeah, do. Definitely. And maybe in another one year or so, we'll mm -hmm. come back and do like a sequel. Amazing. amazing. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. Also, check out the Flux app. Alright? Mm -hmm. Peace out. Bye. Thank you.